All right, it's time to go over my top 10 running backs for week 11. We're starting right here at number 10. We're saying Kenneth Walker. This is a running back that I know can get the job done. We saw it just last week that he was going against the 49ers. The, the Bucky Irvin ran for, uh, you know, what, 70-something yards against them, and he was splitting time with Rashad White. So this week, you're going to see Kenneth Walker go and have a solid matchup. I mean, he's going to get a lot of the carries. Zach Charbonne is really not there behind him, but this week, like I said, they're going against this 49ers team right now. They rank 20th against opposing running backs. They should have an opportunity for a solid week this week just because he gets most of the carries. And if you got somebody that, that 49ers, they're kind of leaking a little bit right now on defense in the run game. They're giving up a lot of yardage. And I think Kenneth Walker is going to be able to come in here, get a good chunk yardage out of this team, and put up a good solid fantasy uh, stat for you. That's why I had to put him in here at number 10. I think he's going to do a very good job. There's not a lot of competition, like I said, in this backfield, even though they got, you know, Geno Smith out there with DK Metcalf just throwing the football. I think Jack Smith and Jigba's doing really, really well. But they're going to run the football, right? A big identity of the Seahawks is running the football. And that's where Kenneth Walker comes in. Even going against a daunting 49ers defense, I think he's going to be able to have just enough juice to get you some good fantasy points to help uh, kind of save your week this week. Get him into your lineups. I'll be, thank you. I think you'll be happy that you did. Coming here at number nine, we're saying Jonathan Taylor. This is a running back that's... He really isn't struggling, per se, even without Anthony Richardson being in there. Even Joe Flacco's kind of, he's playing like Hakka dude at this point. Still had over 100 rushing yards last week. Even though going into this week, I think he's going to be doing the same of the most. They're, they're really trying to put, you know, Jonathan Taylor out front. They're, they're really using him the most. That way they don't have to really rely on passing the football. So this week, they are taking on a Jets defense that ranks 15th against opposing running backs. He continues to be really the only bright spot for this entire offense. And you only have to think, you know, how long are they going to go with Joe Flacco absolutely playing like absolute caca doo doo at this point before they put Anthony Richardson back in? And then the question goes, did Anthony Richardson learn anything? Did he learn anything by him getting benched, tapping on his helmet, coming out there? And if he does improve, that's only going to help Jonathan Taylor even more. But as far as we know, this week, Joe Flacco is the quarterback. Could they make a switch to uh, Anthony Richardson? Not sure. I think they should, but I'm not sure. Either way it goes, no matter which quarterback plays. I think Jonathan Taylor's got a nice, solid matchup against a Jets defense that can be ran up on. So, and I think Jonathan Taylor, he's talented. He's good at what he does. He can get you a lot of fantasy points. Easily number nine for me. Coming here at number eight, we're going Alva Kamara, right? Really the, the, the main guy in this offense, even with Derek Carr coming back, still showing that he can get the job done. They're running him the football quite a bit. There's nobody else in that backfield. You know, you got Mims back there. But other than that, nobody really taking any kind of touches away from Alvin Kamara. He's catching the football. He's running the football. He's doing a little bit of everything. But this week, they're taking on a Browns defense that ranks eighth against opposing running backs. He's truly the last man standing in this offense. And even though, yes, the Browns do rank eighth, you got to think about that. He's not just running the football. He catches the football quite a bit. He has screen plays. He's got, you know, jet sweeps. He does all types of things that's going to get him involved and get him in and just kind of create as much space as possible so he can get a lot of fantasy points. Alvin Kamara's had a solid fantasy season, signed a two-year contract with the Saints, so there's no question where he's going to be. He's going to be in New Orleans. They're going to build around this guy. He's going to be consistent, just like he's going to be consistent here in Week 11 against the Browns team that has a really good defense. The problem is that, hey, look, they're desperate. They're going to be in a negative game script, so you're probably going to get a lot of receiving yards. So if you're in a half PPR or full PPR league, I think that's even better for Alvin Kamara. Could even produce even higher for you. Uh, so let's just move right along here. At number seven, we're going B. John Robinson. This is a running back. They're really starting to get involved more and more and more. He's starting to really take a lot of workload away from Tyler Algier. And this is kind of what I wanted last year from B. John Robinson. And Arthur Smith just wasn't doing the job for him. So now they're kind of, they're starting to slowly unleash the guy. Kirk Cousins is unlocking. He's throwing uh, Kyle Pitts. You got Darno Mooney. You know, you got Drake London. There's, the offense is starting to click on all cylinders. Even though they lost last week against the Saints, I think they should be able to rebound and get out there and have a good solid game this week. But this week they do play a Broncos defense that ranks 18th against opposing running backs. Being featured in this back field as of right now so being featured is a good thing right so especially if you're playing in a positive game trip if you're winning a lot they're gonna be running the football a lot Bijan robinson is as electric as they come at the running back position he's he's very shifty can hit the hole has good vision and he can get to the football as well so there's a lot of options out there for him to be able to go and, and be able to score plenty of fantasy football points for you there is a tough broncos defense ahead of them but they're gonna have to do a little bit of back and forth because bo nix is actually playing a lot better himself so there's gonna be a lot of action where they're gonna need Bijan robinson to step up and be a good football Focal point, and that's only going to help you with fantasy points. Can't wait to see what Bijan Robinson does this week on in week 11 against the Broncos. So, move right along here. Going to number six, we're going Joe Mixon. This guy's been, I mean, he just gets the ball, doesn't he? I mean, I love seeing these bell cow 
Mixon-esque running backs. Joe Mixon is one of these guys. And this week, they're taking on a Cowboys defense that ranks 29th against opposing running backs. His usage is through the roof, and, roof, and he's taking on a, a team that's absolutely in shambles right now. Who's going to be the quarterback? Cooper Rush? Probably not. Maybe even Trey Lance. Who knows what's going to happen? I, I, I love this situation for him. I think he comes in there and has such a big workload. He could put up 200 yards rushing this week, and I wouldn't be surprised. Nico Collins maybe he should be coming back this week. Should be rocking and rolling with this offense. I think CJ Stroud's going to throw the football all over the place. They're going to get such a big lead that they're going to do nothing but run the football over and over and over. Joe Mixon should have an amazing, amazing week. Can't wait to see what he can do for us uh, in week 11. So, move right along here. At number five, we're going Devon A-Chain. So, this is another running back. Started kind of slow last week, and then he kind of picked it up a little bit and had an okay game. I think this week they're going to have even a better opportunity to, to, to have a good fantasy output for you. He's absolutely electric. Yes, he has some of these dead games sometimes, but he also has some really big boom games, and this could be a boom game for the Dolphins. I think they're going to come out here and set a kind of the tone on what they want to do for football and the AFC. But this week they're taking on a Raiders defense that ranks 27th against opposing running backs. He's still the number one running back in his backfield. Didn't matter if Raheem Mostert's coming back there. I know uh, Jay Jalen Wright's got to handle a little bit of injury himself, but this is all Devon Aching, and I, I was wrong at the beginning of the season. I didn't think he was going to be able to hold up and stay healthy for the majority of the season, and that is exactly what he's done. He's electric. Uh, Moster went down, and I even said if Moster goes down, this is Jalen Wright's job. You know, it's just a big, more big-bodied type of running back. I was wrong on that as well. A-Chain has completely dumbfounded me at this point he's a smaller running back that's actually working as a bell cow if he needs to the dudes ran over 20 times in a game already i mean he's doing great things i like him this week for fantasy football i think he's gonna set a uh, like i said the whole miami dolphins is gonna set the tone for the entire afc to say hey look we are here a chain is gonna be a big reason why i like him in week 11 so we right along here at number four we're going Kyron williams is another one of those running backs who is a bell cow type of running back because he gets all the carries in this back foot and i love it as a fantasy football player I love seeing running backs like this. I think it's going to be phenomenal. This week, they take on a Patriots defense that ranks 26 against opposing running backs. He's getting a crazy amount of workload, like I always tell you guys, right? He's getting the job done with the work that he's getting. He didn't have a great game last week, but he got a lot of carries last week. That's what I want. Opportunities is going to equal a lot of fantasy points in most uh, cases. You want the volume to be there. Kyron Williams gets that volume every single week. And in most of these weeks, he does really well. And he, he's able to produce in the amount of volume that he's getting. So I like I like him quite a bit this week. I think he gets the job done. and going to have a much better than he did last week as well. So coming at number three, somebody I've been waiting to put on my top 10 list for a while. It's Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey he came back last week. I think he still had like 13 carries. And he was still being worked into this offense. He was still clearly the lead back here. But they you can see there were some series he took off. He was in there for a series. They took him out for a series. Jordan Mason got some work there. So this week, I think he gets more to a full workload, right? This week, they're taking on a Seahawks defense that ranks 23rd against opposing running backs. Like I was saying, we could see a full workload this week, or at least more of a full workload this week. And if he got 13 carries last, last week, maybe you see 16 carries. This week, that would be great for Christian McCaffrey to get more involved. Maybe he plays two series and then takes one off instead of one, 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 one. And that's going to help you just produce more and more points. The problem is that most of you that have Christian McCaffrey right now have, have dug yourself in a hole so much because you didn't have him throughout the season. Maybe it's just too much to, to kind of dig yourself out of a hole to kind of maybe make the playoffs. But do the best you can. We'll see. It kind of took everybody off guard. Christian McCaffrey was my number one guy on the board. Nobody knew. Nobody knew he wasn't going to play all the way up to probably like the week prior, the, wait, a couple days prior before the season kicked off, did we learn that Christian McCaffrey was not going to be playing. So now we get to all write the retribution. Hopefully you were able to scrape up some wins without Christian McCaffrey now that he's back. Should be getting back to 100%. Should be out there with near a full workload and being able to dominate. Could be do you really well here in week 11. So let's move right along here. Coming to number two, we're going Derek Henry, right? He's going to be, he's been on my number two on my list for quite a week, few weeks now. He consistently, he scored a touchdown in every single game he's played so far this season. He's rumbling, tumbling, stumbling all the way down the field. There's no one that can stop him. He's doing a phenomenal job. I'm telling you, when you see this guy coming down the field, you don't really want to tackle the guy. He's that big of a dude. So, But this week, they are taking on a Steelers defense that ranks 11th against opposing running backs. He's an absolute man-child out there, even though they are playing against a Steelers defense that's actually pretty good against the run. They're pretty good against the pass. They're just a good defense in total. I think the Ravens offense in general is so multi-dimensional with Lamar Jackson and him and Zay Flowers on the outside where they got Deontay Johnson now as well. Mark Andrews, Isaiah likely should be back from injury as well. 
that you can't just focus on Lamar Jackson. You can't just focus on Derrick Henry. You got to kind of play for everything. And that even makes them more scarier, right? So even when they're going against a defense like a ranks 11 against opposing running backs, I think that's a little fluffed at this point when you play in a team like the Ravens. I think there's just so many options. There's going to be holes that are open for Derrick Henry, and he's going to hit those. I think he's a phenomenal play for Week 11. That brings us to our number one, pretty much our number one almost every week. That's Saquon Barkley absolutely killing it out there with the Eagles, doing such a good job. The dude can take a team on his shoulders and just completely dominate. Or you can see something like last week where he didn't completely dominate, but was still effective in the football game. This week, I think he gets right back to being a dominant type of worker to get out there and run for a lot of yards. I love myself some Saquon Barkley. This week, they're taking on a commander's defense right now, ranks 14th against opposing running backs, but he continues to dominate these touches, right? And I think they're gonna come out there and against a good commander's team. Should I say that out loud? But yes, they are a good commander's team. It's a divisional matchup. They need to win this. They need to set the tone. This is what's going to set them as number one in the NFC East. They want that. They want that bragging rights. They want to pull away from the commanders. Getting that tiebreaker could come in importance when it comes to playoff seating as well. So this is an important team uh, game for both teams. I think Saquon Barkley is going to be a big portion of that. Guys, that is my top 10 running backs for week 11. Make sure you guys hit a like button, hit a subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Is there anybody in the top 10 running backs that I didn't put in there that you think should be in there? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. We're pumping out so many videos at this point each and every week. We want you to set the best lineup possible because at our ultimate goal here at the Bayou Bingo Fantasy Network for you to win a championship, you can do that by just hitting that subscribe button and listening and, and taking the information that we are giving you. I can't wait to see you on the next video. We'll see you guys next time.